My name is Jackie Davis. I'll be moderating our discussions, and my aim is to ensure that we have a lively and very interactive debate. <laughs> Agricultural production will need to double by 2030 to prevent future food crises, and sustainable solutions will need to be found to cope with the growing scarcity of land, water, and energy. So, what role can biotech innovation play in enhancing global food security? The organizers have invited farmers from three continents to speak about their experiences in growing GM crops in their respective countries, as well as representatives from the EU institutions and other stakeholders. For 50 years, not only European developing cooperation, but developed cooperation at large, we have pretended to help by telling what to do and how to do it. This is wrong. I'm not stating an opinion. I am measuring the facts. Today already the food produced in the world is enough for 9 billion people and we are 6. But still yet there are 1 billion that are suffering hunger. So there is something wrong about it. If I can give a contribution to today is this one private equity in agriculture in order to sustain private investments because agriculture is done by people and not by governments. Thank you. Another slide showing that also farmers did benefit from the introduction of uh, GM crops by, for example, reduced uh, pesticide use, higher yield efficiency, in the end translated into higher gross margins at uh, farm level. We can produce GMO free in Brazil, no problem. But Comparing the new technology with the old technology, conventional, the cost for the, uh, the advantage for the farmers is bigger than another. So biotechnology came into my awareness during the demo trial in one of the towns in Pangasinan, and I was so impressed with the clean leaves and the cobs. So without any objection, I volunteered to become a demo trial on my own field. For any technology, the farmer depends, the, the choosing depends on how well this technology tackles problems that the farmer has been facing. At the end of the session, uh, I will see whether anybody feels moved to move again. This side will always be for the motion, this side will always be against the motion. And as I say, can I just remind you before you start, the aim of all your interventions is to convince everyone around you to come round to your point of view. Motion number one, technological innovation in agriculture is essential to feed the world sustainably. I'm going to ask um, Carlos Zucchetto, who is a farmer from Brazil. Carlos, why do you think this motion is correct? Inclusive, se alguém tiver alguma ideia melhor, eu aceito. Enquanto não houver outra ideia melhor, Vou continuar e vou aprimorar mais essa, essa técnica, de, técnica nova que está aparecendo. Technological change is necessary but not sufficient. And what is more important than technical change is institutional change to achieve technical change. Anybody else want to come in and tell me why they are sitting on this side of the room? In my case, in South Africa, it's distribution which is a problem of food. Thanks. Thank you very much. So you have got a convert, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody else either want to defend their support for the motion? I think for those on the other side, what you're really talking about is the new miracle, and that is how, to, how information gets transferred around the world. I'm convinced, actually, if I had a chance, I would stand in the middle. <laughs> in British politics, there is no middle. Sometimes, if you consider the, the case of Africa, uh, actually, we, 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 somebody was talking about the, 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 existing, uh, the existing technologies to be transferred. We sometimes don't even have those technologies around. Anybody else going to change sides at this point? And this link between farmers and consumers is well established. And try and convince more of them to join you on this side. We want to uh, have um, environmentally friendly practices in our farms. And uh, we cannot do it because we don't have access to some biotech crops. Mais pour moi, c'est par manque d'information que vraiment la culture des OGM est vraiment un problème en Europe. We would be just as advanced in Europe if we could just use the stuff, and it's 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 uh, very frustrating. We have more movement now. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, well, that's interesting. You're in a minority now on this side. I don't think this is actually a question of education or information. It's a question of political will. Everything you say is 100% true, but that, that's a nuance. The distinguish between public perception as revealed by questionnaires and public perception as revealed by action. Well, in principle, they can buy GM food if they want. The consumer would immediately know where to choose. We are uh, acting against the treaty because the treaty says we have to stabilize, uh, to, to st stabilize the market. If you are against, on the other side, ah, oh, we have a little bit of movement. They were the ones who lead to welcome and approve the use and cultivation of these GM crops. I think the role of politicians is to enable our politicians in Europe access and freedom of choice. I would like to thank particularly all our speakers, both in the opening session, all those who formally spoke for and against the motions, but all of you uh, for what I think has been a very stimulating debate. I think it's been really useful to have exchange of views on what could be the role that new technologies could play in this new context um, on food security. Today we had a lot of farmers here from Europe, from, from Africa mostly, and also from Southeast Asia. I mean, they put put forward a very strong argument that they see that biotechnology can be a good thing and that you, it can be used uh, sustainably and responsibly. It has opened up uh, my mind and my, uh, my uh, increased my knowledge about uh, the status of, uh, of, of, of Europe uh, as regards to uh, uh, GMs. The main point was, um, was this uh, attitude of Europe and how Europe can influence developing countries, for example, with its, uh, I think, negative uh, approach to GMOs. In many countries they have access to some technology we don't have access here. They've been having for many years and they think it's uh, safe, it works, and it's good for the farmer and there's no problem for the consumer. Je savais pas qu'en Europe, il euh, y a des producteurs, les, les producteurs aussi ont besoin d'avancer en matière de biotechnologie. Donc ça, ça m'a beaucoup impressionné. I was worried that, you know, there'd be a very hostile atmosphere, but there isn't. It's a very strong atmosphere that things are going to go forward. And I thought it was a very nice debate with lots of different views from different nations and very friendly.